Welcome back, everybody. In this episode, we're super excited to install these uh, Max Speeding Rods 24-way adjustable coilovers. Of course, our friends at Max Speeding Rods were kind enough to send us a set to test and to throw into our E46 project car. Of course, big plans for this one down the road. First is coilovers because the uh, factory springs like to break and uh, second one being a turbo of some sort. Maybe with an eight speed. We'll want to figure it out down the road. So in today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to properly set up these coilovers. We're going to put them into the E46 and kind of give it a bit of a shakedown to see where we like the ride height. What's really nice is with these, each one has the adjustability for the strut itself to lower right into the body of the coilover. Some benefits with that is if by chance you end up lowering the vehicle on stock struts, one of the biggest issues you can have is the strut is now pre-compressed when you end up lowering it onto the strut. So it will reduce the overall life of the coilover system. And for these, you simply, if you're lowering it two inches, you shorten the strut two inches. So what we're gonna start with by installing these is determine the lowering we want, take the factory diameter or the factory length of the strut, lower it by that amount and go from there. Overall look of it, the quality is very, very impressive. I'm actually very impressed with how these look. The welds are good. You've got thick flanges here and overall, it's all nice billet aluminum and it's pinky red. So it stands out and it looks really good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw these in. Now we'll give you uh, any tips that we end up coming across, but it's relatively straightforward when you're installing them on a BMW. And of course, we're gonna take it for a test drive. Now, one thing to also keep in mind, that's very important is springs will settle. So you should drive them for a few hundred miles, a few hundred kilometers, whatever it is. The springs will settle and there's a good chance that you need to readjust the ride height. So what I recommend is don't install them into your alignment right away. Drive on them for about a week, fine tune the ride height to where you want it, then get an alignment. So they're gonna drive completely night and day from install to a few days after or a week, whatever. Okay, we're gonna get to it. Oh my god! One of my cars has a jack pad! NASCAR! Alright, so front seam pretty straightforward. We have one pinch bolt that's an 18 down here. And then we have the one for the sway bar end link, which is a 16 up here. Zap those two off. Hope that the Canadian weather has been nice to it and it's gonna slide out of the strut or the strut's gonna slide out of the knuckle and then we'll go from there. All right, so the sway bar end link when I undid it is just sitting a little sideways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jack the wheel up a little bit, get it straight so it comes out nice and easy and uh, make it a little bit more simpler. We'll also use the jack to kind of help with the install when we re-put it into. So next up, after you remove the sway bar end link, you remove the pinch bolt. I've put a uh, second jack under the wheel, just so when I undo the top three nuts, it's not gonna drop right away. And then more or less the struts out. There you go. So once I lower the jack, those three should just pull right out. God, this jack is slow. You better be careful when you're pulling that out because there could be tension on it and can just spring forward. But why is the hub not dropping? Because you need to stand on it. Oh. Yeah, see my 104 pound soaking wet wasn't gonna do that. Sometimes what you're gonna need to do. Yep, there you go. Thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. That's not light at all. Hey, heads up. Sometimes what you're gonna need to do is Step on the hub just to make sure that it ends up popping out of the strut itself. You could spray it with some WD-40. Biggest and most important thing is just these wires here. So when the hub comes loose, you don't want to pull tension on the brake line or the ABS line. So let's, I don't know, do something. What we're going to start with is loosening off each collar and brushing some anti-seize into the actual threaded portion so that we don't end up having issues with it binding or rust building up. So we're gonna loosen the, both of these, brush some anti-seize in. Again, about a turn and a half of preload on the spring, and then 
We'll set both front coilovers to an approximate ride height, but we're gonna know better once we lower it down on its own weight. One neat thing that we ended up seeing on these coilovers is where your regular top hat would essentially have a bearing in the middle of it that it's bolted to it with a membrane and rubber. These are billet and they actually have like a ball socket style right on top. Now a few things that are of benefit with this is I would say bump steer. So bump steer would be a, a big one. So when the suspension or even when you hit a pothole, when the suspension compresses really quick, it could flex through the rubber mount. Whereas this, it's all solid billet aluminum, which is very, very, very nice. So you end up getting more of a solid connected feel with the ground and there would be a significant improvement with something like this as opposed to say like a entry level coilover that retains the factory strut hat or the strut mount. So again, the rubber on a factory one will flex far too much whereas this is solid because it has this nice ball socket design. I believe they're called pillow ball. I mean, you could call them any number of things, but this is much, much, much better than a standard coilover. So far, I'm pretty impressed. One tip though for BMW guys is when you go to install these, this is gonna be towards the fender and this is towards the engine. Do yourself a favor because the actual radius of this hole is larger than what's on the actual strut tower. So before you end up mounting it and learning the hard way, move these Allen head bolts over at least one so that when you go to camber it, these bolts aren't hidden underneath the strut. Now start with them being near zero. You're gonna see right away if you need to adjust them. There's gonna be four holes typically. Now in the event that you are a stancy boy and you want lots of camber, you're gonna to have to move all of these bolts to the outer ones. So when it ends up being cambered in, you'll still have access to the Allen head bolts. This is where it's super handy to have two people. One to kind of hold it up, one to put a couple nuts on it. So on a lot of BMWs, you have a locator pin here for the factory strut. Where these actually go through the chassis, it's a bit of an oval. So if you wanna cheat and get about a half degree of camber, you can loosen the three of these off, push the strut inward, and you'll actually get a little bit more camber. On an e-chassis vehicle, you pull out this pin. Most have either a little Allen head on them, or you just grab them with vice grips. You wiggle them, you push it towards the engine, and you're good to go. That's an extra little tip for those stock, stock guys out here. All right, so now that Tony helped me with that, obviously there's the big gap, so I'm gonna jack this up, get it where I need it to go, so I can put the strut in to the pinch at the bottom. Make sure everything's tight, everything's anti-seized. We are just gonna jack this up, put the sway bar end link into the locator, blast the bolt in at the bottom, blast the bolt in for this, on to the next. All right, so we've got the one bolt all the way down here that locates the back of the strut and then in the trunk. So right here, you have the two bolts. Now, a lot of people would have to remove their carpet and stuff like that. Um, I love on the E92 how there's actually a hole drilled to be able to access it. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing is when I put this back, I'm gonna take a big hole saw, drill a big hole, and then it's easy to just access for future reference. And uh, because these are adjustable with damper and stuff like that, it'll be a lot more convenient than pulling this back and forth. So rear is relatively the same as the front, hopefully easy. Watch your toes! Did it fall out or bounce? Uh, well, it's a little blown, so I don't think it's got much bounce to her, but... Uh, Junk. So I'm gonna have uh, Tony stand on the disc in the back to kind of unload the spring. We'll pull the old spring out and then put the new spring in on the perch. After you clean it properly. After I clean it properly. Um, Excuse me. Bigfoot's been spotted. Calgary. Alberta. You should have saw that. That was a good shot. What am I doing? We got to get the old spring out. My 110 pounds ain't going to do it. Get it out. 
Gucci. I'm charging them 20 bucks every time I help. All right, so painting some anti seize on with a paintbrush, just so we don't get these seized up. We're gonna adjust the height, probably closest to the bottom, right, Tony? I would probably put them midway, but what do I know? That's kind of what I'm thinking. So midway, that's what the boss said. Lock them up, put the spring in, and then Uno reverse card. Right, so we're gonna put this in. I set it where I wanted it to start with. We're gonna re-put the insulator pads in, just so it sits a lot nicer. On goes the spring. Once uh, I get Tony over here again. Tony! <sighs> All right, what's your problem? Well, I need you to step on it so I can. <whistles> Jesus, man. Step. Up. Up what? Well, let go. Oh. Now, I don't know. Uh, what height or anything I want to set it at. So I've just left this loose. I'll anti-seize it. But for now, I'm just going to throw it up in here, let it hold, and then uh, kind of look and sit and stare. So I'm just going to kind of look at the two side by side, kind of line these up, and then it's going to give me a bit better of an idea of the difference. One's already in the car. What I'll do is I'll measure here to where I'm happy outside of the car, and then the one that's already in the car, I'll set to that length, tighten it in. Good to go. All right, so we're gonna throw the tire back on. I'm going to uh, put it back on the ground, tighten the two top nuts, everything down here is tightened to spec, and then quickly do the other side and we'll go for a drive. So we've driven on them for a little bit now just to see what they're like, and they're pretty good on our crappy roads. There's no crashing or crazy noises. You can definitely feel they're a little bit stiffer. I think I only have it, I don't know, like eight clicks on the damper control, but they, they feel great. No crashing over speed bumps. Nice when you're just cruising around, but at the same time, they, they're definitely a lot stiffer. We're just gonna take the car for a quick wash because it's been the winter runner. It's absolutely filthy. And then uh, we'll kind of show you what it looks like. We didn't slam it, of course. It's not really the, the look I wanted. It's just a, a car that gets driven a lot. So we'll give you a peek. So we took it to the car wash, cleaned it a little bit, even though it's gonna be uh, filthy in another 20 seconds, but purposely drove over a bunch of bumps on the way, kind of to see how they were. Honestly, bang for buck, really big fan. It's something I would even consider throwing on like the E92 or another project as uh, something just to run. Looks wise, I'll probably raise the front or lower the front a little bit, raise the back a little bit. I've always kind of been a fan of the rake look. I know a lot of people are against that. Probably stiffen it up a little bit more, but uh, I, honestly, huge thanks to Max Speeding Rods. It's, it's pretty crazy what you get uh, bang for buck with adjustability, comfort, no crashing, no nothing over multiple bumps that I purposely hit, speed bumps, et cetera, et cetera. So that's it. Thanks again, Max Speeding Rods. We appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, have a good time. Got a lot of junk in here, man. Junk in the trunk? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Is the bolt all the way out? No, I gotta go get a ratchet. So how's it gonna spring down? If the bolt's all the way out, it would just bang, no? No. Yes. Somebody knocking on some Yeah, I'm testing my luck. Oh, oh sh**. A little top heavy, I think. You're top heavy? Yeah, because I got a big brain. No, your head's hollow and you're like a bean pole. What part are you top heavy? The glasses, maybe. It's your excuse. I'm fat. <laughs> you're fluffy. Yeah, I'm fluffy. I need to put shoes on.